actually the director of this particular institute of statistical, social, and uh, economic research between 2003 and 2010. He was also former vice chancellor of this particular university. And prior to this, that appointment as the vice chancellor of the University of Ghana, he was a senior fellow and director of the Africa Growth Initiative at the Brookings Institution, Washington, DC. He is the secretary general of the African Research Universities Alliance and what we are excited to have him speak to us on is his current capacity because he is the founding chair of the Partnership for African Social Governance and Research, which seeks to advance research excellence for governance and public policy in Africa. Please put your hands together as we welcome Professor Ernest Ayite, founding chair, PA, SGR. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Minister of State, Provost of the College of Humanities, Director of Visa, Director of Higher Education at uh, PASGA, and distinguished guests here. Let me thank uh, Beatrice and her team for inviting him to speak on this occasion where we launched the Western Hub Training in Ghana. I'm very excited for this opportunity for a number of reasons. Uh, the first being that uh, it allows me to talk about PASCA in a way that I haven't had the opportunity to do so in Ghana. PASCA is a partnership for African social and governance research. And uh, it's the institution that created PEDAL as I always fight with Beatrice about, there's much more to life than pedal. Hmm? Pedal is important, and I'll, I'll be talking about that shortly. But behind pedal is PASGA, and I'm the chair of PASGA, or I was the chair until a few months ago. <laughs> I, I stepped down in, in last April. I've been chair from the beginning. Uh, you know, I know as Africans, when you are put there as chair, you are there till people remember that, but this one has been there for so long. They have forgotten that I've been there since 2009. So I didn't want to celebrate a 10th birthday of uh, being the chair. So the anniversary of being chair, 10 years down the road, I said it was long enough. So we have appointed a new chair who will take over in October. But uh, as one of my last activities before disappearing from Pasco, I, I, I decided to talk briefly about PASGA and the link, you see the link shortly to PEDAL and you see how big the role that you've been given uh, is. Why PASGA? PASGA began 10 years ago because a group of us, African social scientists, believe strongly that the African voice in the social sciences worldwide should be a lot more prominent. We had seen how economics as a discipline had been transformed in the region over a 30 year period, or well, at that time over a 25 year period, through the African Economic Research Consortium. A, a consortium that brought African researchers from the east, from the west, from the south, from the north together to do research sponsored by the World Bank and other entities. And we've seen how the discipline of economics has changed in the region. The role economists play in policy making. Today, there's hardly any central bank governor in the region who hasn't had any affiliation to AERC. So why don't you do the same thing for the social sciences? We're thinking about sociology, we're thinking about political science, geography, history, all the things that make for social science. How do we create a voice in policy making for African social scientists? How do we make African sociologists important to policy debates in our countries? How do we make African geographers, African migration experts very important to the way we decide in our engagement on the sustainable development goals? How do we make African political scientists critical to the way we think about globalization around the world? These were the things that brought us to Nairobi to reflect 
on how to do that. That's why we created PASGA as the Partnership for African Social and Governance Research. The idea being that when you're a professor of sociology at Ibadan, your research will be such that African governments would want to use it in discussions globally. That if you were a professor of uh, migration uh, at Dar es Salaam or at Nairobi, that your contribution to global debates on migration would be important enough to be considered by the UN. That's the dream that we took with us to Nairobi. And we're extremely lucky that DFID agreed to support us. So a number of us met and uh, we formed PASGA. So we began the March in 2009. Uh, I was lucky enough to be appointed the first chair. We've had a lot through PASGA. We've created the MRPP program, the Master of Research in Public Policy, which some of you uh, are familiar with. The whole idea was how do you find a central theme to bring together the social sciences of what led to the MRPP program. I'm happy that out of that, we are moving further and further and are considering and doing the doctoral programs in policy, public policy. And hopefully, out of that, we'll be able to strengthen PhD programs in all the social sciences uh, in our universities, so long as we are interested. I take it from your presence here that you are interested in social science graduate studies in your university being enhanced. You are interested in doing a lot more research than has been the case in the past. And you are interested in your research being published by the best outlets in the world. Indeed, Pascal does not believe that we should only look our champions, but we should be also global champions. That's why we are supporting the development of African journals to global standards not simply using African standards. There are many of us, African social scientists, who always will argue, can we bring down the standards so that we Africans, no. I, I don't subscribe to that view. I believe it's possible for us to raise the bar and support Africans to do globalized research, work that is globally competitive, and in so doing, bring along our students. So PEDAL is the arm that we've created or developed with support from Sphere funded by DFID to help us do that. If we are going to train good researchers, they must train them properly. The approaches to pedagogy must change because the world has changed. If you take the world of higher education around globally, the biggest thing that has changed in the last two decades has been the use of technology. So higher education has changed. What a student needs from the professor it's not new knowledge. You're not going to give him or her that new knowledge. You can give information, but that information is available everywhere on the internet. So today, a student probably has more information about a theme being discussed than the professor does. So the role of the professor in the lecture room is different from what it used to be 10 years ago, 20 years ago. That has changed. Technology has changed the relationship between the student and the professor. So how do we prepare, prepare the professor for this new engagement, this new student, this new student who is more inquiring, this new student who is thinking about how to join uh, Mr. Aquello? Hmm? How do we prepare this new student for that new world? How do you prepare a new student in Africa who is thinking of finishing and going to Stanford for graduate school? How do you prepare that new student from Lagos or from Ibadan for a new world in which he's going to be competing with students from Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, and so on. It's a completely different thing. And the thing that makes a big difference is how technology is used. So I'm happy that Federal makes it possible for us as Africans to begin to think about these issues. PASGA is very, very much embedded in the use of new technology. PASGA believes that strongly. Pasga would like to see African universities invest considerably in technology, not simply do the investment, but have it applied to both teaching and research. Today, it is possible to use big data 
to organize the graduate work in our universities. It's possible for our students to write very good theses, whether in the sciences or in the arts, social sciences, relied on data collected elsewhere, provided through open source. That's making the way in which we write very different from it was 10 years ago. Today, as a result of new technologies, we can't afford to remain silent on how the data is used. If we do, if we do not show much interest in the way data is gathered and used for research, young students from, from the US, from Europe, will be writing about Africa. The material that will be used by African governments for policy making in Africa will be provided by young 25-year-olds from Stanford and from MIT, from Cambridge. That's what is going to happen. So it's our responsibility as African scholars to engage with the changes taking place around us. PASDA is there to support. Before I sit down, let me talk briefly about Arua. That's the new job I have. Uh, I'm not talking about it because I have a job. I'm talking about it because it's relevant to what you are doing. And after all, Arua is a part of the pedal uh, family. Arua is the alliance, the African Research Research Alliance. It brings together 16 of the best African universities. What it seeks to do is basically along the same lines as PASGA. It wants African universities to do more research at a higher level than has been the case before. PEDAL is working through PASGA. In September, we'll be in Kampala, where 16 African deputy vice chancellors will be discussing PEDAL with uh, uh, Beatrice very much in the control. Beatrice is going to tell these deputy vice chancellors how to change their universities. My job is to bring them there. Her job is to tell them what to do. <laughs> Hopefully, when these African vice, uh, pro vice chancellors deputy vice, go back to their universities, they will be able to begin the process of internalizing these training programs. So the program that you're having today here in Accra for the sub-region will become a part of the program being done by several, at least 16 African universities internally using their own resources. That is the way we are going to change the face of pedagogy in African universities. Hopefully, these 16 will then also affect others. So through a snowball effect, every African university will come to realize that the way students are taught around the world has changed. And Africa must not be left behind in that change. Thank you very much.